Father, we praise you. We thank you. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I invite you to open your Bibles to Psalms 105 and St. John 14. And it's good to see my brother Maduka Cosmos from uh, Nigeria is with us this morning. I happen to see him on the, on the end over here. God bless you, my brother. Psalms 105. We're going straight to the Word. Amen. Verse 17. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters, he was laid in iron. Until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of, of all his substance to bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his senators wisdom. In St. Uh, John 14, 12th verse, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. <coughs> and greater works than these shall he do because I go to my Father. In verse 20, at that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Amen. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. As we feel the knowing off of the word come down, shall we bow our heads in a word of prayer? Almighty God, every spirit in this building is subject to the Holy Ghost now. Lord God, may every spirit be anointed, Father. Praise God that the anointing will be up on the people, and I be anointed, Father, and the whole building be anointed until you shake this building, Father. Oh, God, may great power and great grace be poured out here today, Lord, and those that are seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Oh, God, praise God, Lord God, Amen. Praise God. May they be filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. Those that are backslid, Father, wayward, wherever they are, unsanctified, praise God, lost on their way to hell, whatever it is, Lord, and standing in need of a healing, Lord God, may the Holy Ghost come down today, praise God, and pour himself up in the balcony, in the basement, in the mother's room, praise God. The Holy Ghost pour out now, praise God, on the people, praise God. And they'll be praising and thanking you glory, and giving glory to God for they know that this is a day of visitation. We pray, God, you anoint me. Lord God, may you heal this ulcer, heal this diabetes in my body and my condition. Lord God, may the Holy Spirit seal me up today. Hallelujah. Heal my wife's blind eye. Oh, praise God. And Lord, be with Rebecca and the, and the beautiful little baby, Dorcas Lydia. May you touch them today, Lord. May your anointing be upon them. Oh, praise God. We thank you for them. Now, Heavenly Father, anoint the word. Amen. And when you tell me to go lead the pulpit, I will leave. Praise God. Pull out the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise his wonderful name. Glory to God. We know you're here now, Father. The anointing is in the building. Father, take every spirit under your control now. In Jesus' name we pray and ask the blessing. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. I certainly want to uh, give thanks to the Lord for my beautiful granddaughter, Dorcas Lydia. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. I thank the Lord for that because the Lord told me that in, in a, when I was going through trials in 1967, and that, that, that I would see that. Amen. And I, I've lived to see that. Praise God. Amen. So, uh, amen. He, he gave me Psalm 128. Bless everyone that feareth the Lord that walketh in his ways, for thou shalt eat the labor of thy hands, and happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. And, that, and there come Jonathan. Amen. <laughs> Thy children like olive plants around about thy table. Behold, uh, that thus shall the man be uh, blessed that feareth the Lord. Thou, the Lord shall bless thee out of Zion, and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children. And peace be upon Israel. So I thank the Lord. 1967. Told me I see my children's children. I, I got five children's children. Amen. Praise the Lord. See, the Lord speaks to his word. He don't lie. Say, I'll give you the Holy Ghost. You're going to get the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Amen. It's good to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated. I just had to give thanks for that. Amen. So the mother's doing fine. I told Brother Robledo, take a day off, brother. You deserve it. Amen. So we won't, uh, we're going to have two live services today, this morning and tonight. But I told him to take a, uh, to take a rain check, amen. So we don't know what God's going to do. Amen. What can we say about the, the choir singing, amen? Huh? Brother Gerard, uh, my God, and Elizabeth, and, and now we've got a, a duet of uh, L Lois and Joey. My God, hear something? Praise the Lord. Growing up in here. And I held them in my arms and dedicated them to the Lord. Praise God. Here they're men and women married. My God. What a blessing. What a blessing. Praise the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. So praise God. We thank God for all these good things. Amen. And so now my title is, Brother Norman, Joseph Perfection Releases the Holy Ghost Itself. I lie not. That's what the prophet said. Amen. You may be seated. My subject is Joseph perfection manifested is a reflection of Jesus Christ. So praise God. Here we go. Amen. So I just want to say uh, uh, what my intent and purpose is from this day on. Praise God. I just want to be a servant of Christ. Amen. I want to be the pastor of this church. I want the Lord to heal me. So I can bring these people into the perfection of the coming of the Son of God. And I don't care about this world. The world's gone. And they're just waiting to, uh, with this currency to throw it on the gold standard. You see the thing is finished. The whole world is finished. I listened to the finance reports. They don't have any more money to lend. Just yesterday I heard on the banks they ain't got no more money. They actually have to go find other means of uh, lending money for this generation. There is no more money. Not in the bank, not in the government, nowhere. Build your hopes on things eternal. So praise, if you're looking for a career today in business, you are finished, brother. Brother, you better be like Moses. Forsook the world and all the riches of the world. He gave away all the MBAs and the PhDs and the DDDs and he got rid of it. He's one of the smartest men in the world, praise God. But when the, when the hour came, when the time and that October 7th came to him, praise God, he knew he had to put one before the other one. Either had to put education and all the riches of the world or Christ. Now you are faced with the same thing today. What are you going to put there? When you speak from here on, say, if the Lord lives, I mean, if the Lord permits it, if the Lord's will, I will do thus and so. I will go to school. Maybe I will try to get an MBA or a PhD if the Lord, 
if the Lord wills. But if that's not his will, then let me forsake it, praise God. Put God first. Take your lust and desires of what you want and throw it away, praise God. Say, Lord, should I do this? Should I do that? Should I do this? And watch God bless you. Because I'm telling you now, whether it be my family, whoever it is, ministry, from this day on, you're going to watch, you're going to see. And many of you are going to wind up behind the eight ball because you won't put God first. Praise God. May God put some fire on that one now. Amen. Praise God. You better put God first. If the Lord will, I'll do thus and so. If the Lord will, I'll do this and I'll do that. Amen. Praise God. And therefore, Brother Bram said, uh, maybe seated, praise God. I'm reading from Statue of a Perfect Man. So if you want to know, this is a, a statue of a perfect man, which uh, we took down in 1986. That's what it is. Amen. Why? Because there's people here from, that was not here when we had this up here. And that no doubt they don't even have a statue of a perfect man book. So it just came to me that I've been speaking about a statue of a perfect man and Joseph and all these things here, and they don't even know what I'm even talking about. So therefore, today, he said, put it up there so they can see what you're talking about. Now you're settled. Statue of a perfect man, you've seen it many times. Okay, look this way now. Praise God. That's what's there, okay? Amen. And I'm reading from 2 Peter 1, verse 3, according to his divine power, I'm reading from Statue of a perfect man. Amen. I have given us all things. We got everything. Who's going to inherit the earth in all things? Sure. Pertaining, yes, all right. That pertains unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Amen. Amen. This is greater than being, being a president. Praise God of IBM. Amen. Greater than being a lower level vice president. Amen. Greater. Greater. Greater is he that's in you. That he is in the world, praise God. Amen. Greater than all that. The knowledge that we receive in here is greater than that. Greater than in uh, Yale and uh, Harvard Business School and so forth. Greater. More powerful. Praise God. Amen. You may be seated. Whereby, amen, he calls the glory and virtue. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. And that's what I've been preaching all these years. And nobody can understand what I'm doing. All you do is read the same book and read the same Bible, and you know what I'm preaching. And it's so hard. What's he saying? Or, or read the message. That's what I'm, I'm reading. I'm preaching the promises. That's all I can preach is the promises. And the promises of the Son of Man. And Malachi 4 revealed the promises, which is the Son of Man, the new land. Amen. God said so. You can have it. It's yours. That's what I'm preaching. Go get them grapes. Praise God. It's flowing with milk and honey. Hallelujah, and you sit around and can't make up your mind, the world's going to hell. Praise God, the world is going to hell. And people can't make up their mind, should I save Christ? What should I do? Man, and the world is going to hell. The demons is up on the earth, everything. Satanism is taking over the country. Cult worship, a baby worship, and uh, killing the babies and everything. Drinking blood. It's going on now. Right now, today. This morning, you may be seated. You can't make up your mind whether you want to serve God or not. My God, hell, amen, has enlarged his mouth. And God has created this evil thing on the earth because a prophet said to be on the earth. Hell will come up on the earth, souls in prison, and trap them in there. Praise God. Hallelujah. And you can't run now? Well, you better run for your life. Praise God. You don't know how serious this is today. You may be seated. According as his divine power hath given us all things, who's going to inherit the earth and all, no, whereby are given unto us exceeding great precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. Now you get what I'm saying now? For 20 some years I preached these promises that maybe today his divine nature might be poured out. And maybe today will be the day that his divine nature will be here until the rapture. Maybe this is the day here. And these promises have brought you right to this day. Amen. 
then you will become part naked, partakers of it. Faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, and brotherly kindness. Maybe that's today. Signs, wonders, miracles, Holy Ghost works. Maybe it's starting today. Oh, hallelujah. But it was through the promises to get to this day. Thank you. You may be seated. Praise God. Have an escape. Amen. But that you might be partakers of the divine nature. Watch. Having escaped the corruption. Listen to that. That is in the world through lust. You escape that. God. And you're here. You could have been gone a long time ago. But God held you on. And we escaped that. That's enough to shout, dance, sing. Hallelujah. Run up and down the aisles. I escaped the world. Praise God. Walk on the subway and look around the subway and say, I escaped you demons. Stand on 42nd Street. Stand there. I escaped hell. I escaped you. Prostitutes. Filthy drug addicts. I escaped it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise hard rockers and everything else. I escaped this. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you. Day in and day out, thanking the Lord for escaping the corruption that is in the world through lust. And you have anything to praise the Lord for? Praise God. Little sex perverts punching one another in the groins. Praise God. I escaped that. Amen. Hallelujah. Filthy little sex perverts. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. Oh, where was I at? Escape his lust. What lust? Lust for money. Lust for big things. Lust for popularity. These things are dead to the believer. Dead. The believer said, I want my Bible and my spoken word books and the tapes. That's a believer. God give you a job and bless you to go through school. Praise God. You should be on your day, knees day and night thanking him. But thanking him for the chance, praise God, to serve him and his people. Praise God. Maybe see it. Amen. Lust. Dead to the believer. We don't care whether we have a tent or a cottage. Why should I care? Live or die. Sink or drown. This is the thing that I'm interested in, in the kingdom of God. Whether I maintain my home, whether I maintain my family, whether I maintain whatever it is, let me maintain Christ. The hope of glory. Change your perspective today. Change it around. And watch God bless you the way he wants to bless you. But get the idea out of your mind about you're going to conquer this uh, business where you're not going to conquer it. It's already conquered by the Illuminati. So you ain't conquering nothing. The Illuminati is pulling the strings. You may be seated. Otherwise, how could Japan and Germany, West Germany, rise up both enemies? If it wasn't the bankers who, who bought the land over Japan and controlled those companies in Japan, the very cars that you buy, and then they turn around and curse the black people and so forth. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Who they think they are in the first place? Amen. Praise God. It was the American bankers and so forth and the big money that controlled and put the money in West Germany, in Japan. And now here we go around with a cup begging, begging them for money for Saudi Arabia. Praise God. When they were the enemy, we had them on our foot. Now they got us under the foot. Better get in the message, you young men, and start reading these spoken word books and find where you're at. To read your Bible, praise God. Amen. Whether I maintain whatever it is, the, the, let me maintain Christ, the hope of glory. Build me up. See, so you need building up from the day on. Some of you are sloping around here, backslidden right in the church. Amen. Amen. 
I'll do nothing for the Lord. Fill me up, O oh Lord, into this, into this. Let Christ be my head. Let it working through me on my foundation, my faith that's in him. Let virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness work in me. O oh Lord, is my prayer. I don't care, live or die, sink or drown, denomination or no denomination. Friend or no friend, let that work in me. Let Christ's virtue, his knowledge, watch, this is what I'm looking for today. His virtue and his knowledge pour out today. Amen. That I might be able to teach those for God has said in the church, apostles, prophets, teachers, pastors, and evangelists, all for what? All for the perfecting and bringing all these virtues into it to that perfection of the coming of the Son of God. That's my commission. That's what I'm here for. No other cause but Christ, praise God. No other law but the Bible. Hallelujah, praise God. I forsook the whole thing. How many going to stand on this side? Who's on the Lord's side? Who's ready to forsake the world? Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. May be seated. Would I say that my title was now? Joseph Perfection Releases the Holy Ghost Itself. Amen. My subject is Joseph Perfection Manifested as the Reflection of Jesus Christ. And my inspiration is uh, the reflection is the perfection. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. September the 8th. Uh, and at night, uh, November, uh, September the 8th through November 17th. Um, what did I take here? Got the wrong thing here. Amen. 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 Praise God. Anyway, I had a dream that I wanted to read. I'll read it. Uh, September the 8th, November, November 17, 1974, the Lord dropped down some seventh under inspiration. And we had a mighty little revival here. Amen. We have another one right now. You don't know it. <laughs> Praise God. This is a seventh under seed revival. And some of you haven't got caught up into it yet. But you will if you stick around long enough. Amen. So you may be seated on July 8th, 1990. And uh, this July, I preached a message titled, The Manifestation of the Seed Word, Joseph Perfection in Good Ground. And then the Holy Spirit told me to go to Brother L. Stocks in Canada and, and preach up there. I thought I was supposed to rest August 25th and 26th. Thank you, Brother Nino. And uh, go up there and told me to take the same message and break it down, which I did. The word bride, prisoners of love unto the Lord. And lo, here is seed for you and you shall sow the land. And the devil tried to stomp it out of here, and I had to come back and play the tape twice because the church missed it September 2nd and September 9th with the other things going on. They got their minds uh, all polluted and up with what's going on instead of just zeroing in on the promise. <laughs> so they can't take too many things at one time. You got to be able to uh, know how to do that there, you know. It's fly by, you know, <laughs> grab this one, <laughs> you grab it like that. Amen. That's the way I do it. The good thing come by, grab the good thing. I got it. Something bad come by, duck. And you sit there, get, get smacked in the face with everything. Everything smack you in the face, praise God. Boom, 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 boom. Everything. To you. Like this. Conked out. Yes, sir. You may be seated. Know how to grab the good things. Amen. What so and so did, forget it. Duck. Praise God. Put that tape on, Brother Coleman. From Canada. Put it on. I can hear it. I don't care about all this sin and what's going on. I forgive him. Let it go. Praise God. Put the word. Amen. Maybe seated. You get like that, and then you start getting the word. So the devil will see to it that this happened, and that happened, and this happened, and that happened. That that's the devil's business. To pile this place up with all kind of junk. 
Amen? Glory. He told me, <clears throat> he told me to continue with the inspiration from July 8th. And to, he told me to uh, take two more messages out of there uh, and, and preach one October 7th and possibly the 21st. Amen. That's what he told me. So that's what I'm endeavoring to do today. From the same inspiration. Amen. But this was a dream here. Um, Brother Balomo, I was looking through my, some of my effects and, uh, and this, this fell out the other day here. And uh, it's 1974. Right after the, the Seventh Thunder Revival we had in New York City. And on Tuesday, December 31st, dream. Brother Coleman was teaching. The entire church was before him. Uh, there were two fields, exactly like the same size, exactly the same size. One on his right and one on his left. He was speaking about planting seeds. Pointing to the field on the right, he said, you see the seeds were planted here, but the conditions uh, just uh, uh, were, were not just right. And everyone looked on that field, they seemed to be su surprised because it was, it was totally barren. Then Brother Coleman turned and pointed to the other field, to his left. He said, the seed was planted here, and all conditions was perfect. Otherwise, it was good ground. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> See? Everything was done just right. And everyone turned and looked. They were amazed to see huge crops that stood very tall, and they occupied every part of that land so that you couldn't even see the dirt anymore. It seemed this crop was mature. Now listen. It's going to have an effect on this message. And almost ready for his harvest. So may God make you almost ready for the harvest. Praise God. Thank you, Brother Belomo. I held on to that. That's exactly what I did from the seventh thunder inspiration. I caught it and I got the seeds. And I planted them seeds from the seventh thunder inspiration. Malachi 4's message. That's all what I've been doing. If you had read the same books, you would know what I was doing. See, the word, it was the word seed. The prophet said, I come and spoke where his original seed to, and when Elijah comes, he will plant the seed of the entire Bible from Genesis through Revelation. Then if he goes into the Bible and pulls messages out, that is the spoken word. This, this Bible has a spoken word. Is that right? And if, if Malachi 4, the son of man in him, will pull the spoken word and then speak it through Malachi 4's mouth, then the spoken word revealed by the word in the prophet. You understand what I'm saying? This spoken word from Genesis to Revelation is revealed by the Son of Man in the prophet. So the spoken word revealed by the word reveals the word. <laughs> then this is the revealed word. Then this is now a word seed. And these are the seeds that I planted. And these seeds were to bring you down to a certain day when you were supposed to go back to the Bible. Other words, no bald-headed women. You understand? Back to the Bible. Other words, you're hanging over hell by one word. Back to the Bible. But this brings you back. You get so oriented with this that it's all you can think of is this. Then I, that's, the, that's the field that I planned on the left. They're the ones on the left hand side, Brother Balomo. A huge crop. Praise God. They were almost ready. They were right. But you see, when June, you may be seated. And June 30th, uh, you become, you're ripe, but you're still wet. So you're not ready for the harvest just yet to garner. So it needs a hot July sun to come down and bake you out. Bake out what? All the lust for money, the lust for the world, the lust for business, the lust for this, the lust for that. Bake that out of you from today on. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
Amen. You may be seated. So that's what I did. So today I'm trying to endeavor to preach one of those last two messages. Amen. So this is my little seventh under seed revival. Amen. Now I believe it's seed time, bright time, and the seed is ripe for the harvest, but it's still a little wet. Seems about a few days in July. From about July 1st, I, you, I told you many times, the farmer does not, listen, the Lord of the harvest, the Holy Ghost does not even come out into the field because it's green. Why would should he walk out there, the Holy Ghost itself? Well, he knows that's his seed, the wheat is his seed. And he prescribed before the foundation of the world that they had to go through certain stages. So why are you going to look for the dynamics way back when you couldn't even take it? You wasn't even out of the world yet. You want dynamics? You haven't given your heart over to the Lord yet. Every part of you, your heart, soul, mind, body, everything. You don't want no dynamics. You want some sanctification. Praise God. But you want, praise God. Because Brother Brown said, you don't know the power of God. You just know the blessings of God. That when August Bean comes in there, praise God, you're left dazed. <laughs> praise God. When you visit by the angel, forget about you laid out there, praise God. You may be seated. Praise God. Amen. So you got it now. But then when the seed begins to get right, I picture this whole world. And somewhere, and in some fields, a little, bit, a little bit ahead of the other fields. And some fields have a whole lot of tears in it. Because uh, uh, the, the pastors didn't uh, get rid of them tears. You can't jerk them out. You got to preach the word hard enough so they won't grow in there. He said, don't pull them out. So you, you don't pull them out. You preach the word hard enough to make them run out. So you keep your field full of wheat. Maybe you understand why I preach now, huh? I don't want no tears around here, praise God. I don't want no empty gloom heads. Oh, how'd I get over there? I haven't even got, listen, friend, I haven't even got started yet. I haven't even hit this yet. Praise God. Amen. Glory. Amen. Okay, now you got it now? Then when the big field lay across the world all the way to New Zealand, Australia, there's a field. And uh, don't worry, Brother Kelman. Put your shoulders back. Stick your chest out. Lift your head up. You made it. Thank you, brother. Praise God. Amen. The seven thunders is here in New Zealand. Praise God. Well, praise God. So the farmer, the, the husband man, comes down into the field when the seed is ripe. See? I'm going to give you a quote for that. See? When it's ripe, then he begins to pluck. See, he's looking for, you know, it's got all the wet ways. The little wetness is still in the seed. And it needs the hot sun to dry out. It needs to be uh, 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 shook loose from him. Amen? Amen? It needs to be stripped like Moses was, like Paul was, like Joseph was. Stripped before you become a love slave and have power. Before. So you do that by adding to your faith. Virtue and knowledge and the world goes out and the lust goes out and you're coming up the ladder now. You're being stripped. Before, praise God. He that keepeth my commandments, I shall manifest myself to him. At that day, you shall know that my father's in me, and I and the father, and you and me, and I and you. What day? This day. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Maybe seated. Don't you want the husband man to come down here today? Begin to pluck you like this here? Huh? Maybe he's here. Glory. Now that's the season. Now I, I'll post you to a little short grind time. Wheat time, seed time, harvest time, a little short period where he's just plucking. Plucking. Amen. We way past, brother Nat. Way up the road. I'll show you on there where you at. You are stones to be pulled out of this mess. 
You are stones to be fitted to the capstone. Praise God. Hallelujah. You may be seated. And the seed is ripe for the harvest, but it's still a little wet. And now we need the powerful hot sun of July to thoroughly dry out the seed and get it ready for the garner. Seven church ages, page 363. The bride church will mature and her ripeness. Now I don't have to say a word. Your ripeness, I don't have to go to your house. I don't have to get on the phone. I don't have to look at you. Your ripeness shall be an in identification. Her identification with her Lord by means of the word. You say, I'm right, Brother Coleman. Well, wonderful, then, therefore, but the word will tell her whether you're ripe or not. Now you understand, back to the word. I mean, are you getting it, what I'm saying? How could God send me to Canada, the bride, word, prison of love unto the Lord? Don't you see it coming together? I mean, don't want to make you leap over walls and... Huh? Forsake everything? When you see it dovetail like that, I preach it by faith. Back in July 8th, you didn't get it? So they didn't get it? Go up to Canada. You may be seated. And I kind of picked around with Brother Gabriel, and he said, uh, Sister had a dream up there. Uh, you were singing across the bridge. You was in the pulpit. I said, in the pulpit? Brother Frank and Brother, uh, Brother Luke was there. I said, oh, that, that's a meeting. Amen. And then the, both choirs up there had on white wigs. He said, there's your son, you're in judgment. He said, now go back and judge your church on August 28th. Because it's judgment. And take September to clean it out. By September 30th, it must be cleaned out. That means uh, every part of it. That means uh, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, praise God, New Jersey, upstate New York, I don't care where it's at. Fort Totten, uh, uh, New York, wherever it's at. Praise God. Ellis Island, clean it out. Praise God, I got no more time after September 30th. We're back to the Bible, back to the Word. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory. And I knew where I was at. Malachi 4 said, before you can come into full power and be a love slave. Amen. See, where am I at? That's right. Uh, the bride, that's what I was talking about here. Uh, the, the bride church will mature. That's what it is. And her ripeness shall be an identification with her Lord by means of the word. In other words, from here on out to prove you are right, it'll be by the word. I will come to you. Can you take the word? If I say repent or make it right, will you say, well, you see, because uh, this happened because this and that, well, you're not taking the word. You're going around the word. You're making excuses. You haven't come back to the Bible. That's why I say, I ain't even fooling with you. Unless you want to repent or forgive. I mean, if you don't forgive, but God didn't even forgive you. You retain your own sins. That's the word. Oh, I, I don't know <laughs> whether they get it or not. <laughs> See? Glory. Maybe you seated. Now, you got it now? You're not here for me now. In other words, your identification with your Lord to prove you are right will be by the word. How you identify with the word. Because it's the word season. Paul of prison. Malachi 4 told us that God is looking for prisons of love. That's why I preached it, the first one. To be harnessed to the word by the Holy Spirit and pull Malachi 4's message in the presence of the Gentiles. Do you want to pull his message? In the message? With all kinds of false interpretations in the message? But do you want to be one of those love slaves? That's right. really going to prove what Malachi 4 message is all about. Amen. He said, before you become into full power, you may be seated, and be a love slave, you have to be shaved off, then presented. You ready to be shaved? I don't mean your sisters now. I'm talking about your hair. <laughs> You'd be bald-headed then. Amen. But you ready to have everything shaved off of you? So praise God. Paul and Moses were examples Malachi 4 gave. Malachi 4 also gave Joseph as an example of being shaved off first and then given power or full authority. And um, 
And so I saved these quotes for, I said, he said, hold uh, Joseph back for later on. So I, I didn't read it um, on uh, uh, August 25th about Joseph. He said, that's for another message. Amen. So I'll go back to it. Amen. Paul a prisoner. Page uh, 17 to uh, uh, quicken your memory. God is looking for prisoners. He's always done it. You might search it through the scripture. A man has to be a prisoner to Christ against anything. Did you get it? Yeah. Against lust for this and lust for that and lust for that. Against anything. Yeah. Amen. You're a prisoner to Christ. Therefore, you cannot be connected with anything but Christ. Yeah. Even your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, your husband. Even if your father got a house full of videos and you got the Holy Ghost, praise God, don't even touch it. That's, that's him. Those are his idols. Idols. Praise God. Naked idols running around, punching demon idols on the, on the video, killing people, stomping them. Those are idols. Demonism, praise God. Praise God. Videos. And, you, and I don't care if you're 10 years old and your parents want it, pray, you stay away from it. Amen. Be like little Samuel he, as he grew up in the house of Eli. Eli had a filthy priesthood. Laying with the women in the door and sticking the hand down in the pot, pulling the ties out. And they wanted, they even wanted to put it in the pot and put it and boil it. They want to roast it. And they put it down in there, give me that and take it away from the people. People didn't know what to do. Those are Eli's sons. And little Samuel saw all that. Stayed away from it. Pray God will make him a prophet. Praise God. Don't tell me you can't do it now. Yes, sir. There, you may be seated. Therefore, you cannot be connected with anything but Christ. Even your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, your husband, your wife, anybody. You're only connected with Christ and him only. Then God can use you. Until then, you can't. My, 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 my. Praise God. Page 23. He said, uh, have we got about 10 minutes here? I'll, 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 re I'll real quickly get to another character. Uh, I see one before me now. His name is Joseph. He was an elected son. He was a perfect type of Jesus Christ. He was born a prophet. He's a prophet also, and now he could see visions. And when he was yet a little boy, he saw a vision of himself sitting on a throne and brothers bowing to him. But watch, he kind of felt like he was a great guy, see? But what did God have him do? have to do? He did the same thing that he did to the rest of them because Moses was a deliverer. Paul was a deliverer, and now Joseph was a deliverer. He saved his people from the famine. What did God do to him? Put him in prison. Right straight to the prison. Yes, sir. Now, where are you going to go when you get up here on the third phase? Prison. Right straight to the prison. In prison against lust and against this and against that. A lion backbite in prison. Can't do it no more. My, 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 my. I hope you see it, praise God. You're a prisoner to the Lord. Uh, should I? No, don't do that. Do this. Thank you, Lord. Prisoner. Yes, sir. Not my will. Thine will be done, Lord. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. Lord, should I do this? Should I do that? Yea, Lord. Prayed and asking God, Lord, should I marry this woman? Should I marry that man? Ask God. Praise God. Prisoner. Amen. Don't, don't take nobody from the world. Praise God. Amen. I'd rather marry Gravel Gertie if she's in here than marry somebody out in the world. I'll tell you that. Amen. I don't care if you got Gravel Gertie, you got shoes like this here. That would make any difference as long as she's full of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hey. Brother, I don't have to go through no long mind battles. Praise God. I'm in the church of God. I see a, a, a little queen in there. That's mine. I claim it. You're mine. Praise God. She didn't hear me, of course, but I'm telling it in my heart to God that that's mine. Lord God, put me in her heart. And I look at her, watch her. She goes around and she make a little turn around. I, I got her. Praise God. I got her. Amen. That's how it goes. Yes, sir. You may be seated. 
Amen. You get me? Glory. These brothers around here, they can't make up their mind what they want around here. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I know what's going on around here. Praise God. Amen. Holla. I think I hit something there, huh? Now, I know what they want. They want a queen outside. They want to go outside with this sex queen and then run back in the church and repent and look for a virgin. You hit it, you get nothing. You get killed outside. How do you know they're doing it in the other churches? That's how I know. Amen. Praise God. God give you a good woman. Praise God. Next to your salvation, that's the greatest gift you can have. Praise God. Amen. Brother Gerard knows a, a, a gift when he sees one. And man, he's going over to get her in France. He's not playing around. Yeah, he knows something when he sees it. Amen. Glory. Amen, Brother Gerard. God bless you. Amen. He's going all the way to France to get her. Praise God. In October here, our brother Antonio Maris is coming here to get his. Nada. Praise God. He knows that he's forsaken Italy. Praise God. He's going to get his queen. Hallelujah. Nada. Uh, minds are blown out, huh? You may be seated. I'll get over there. So I can't get, now I can't, out here I wouldn't preach like it's nowhere else, but I get into the pastoral stuff here. And I can't get out of it, amen. <laughs> I get locked in there somewhere. Amen. Where am I? Well, watch, he kind of fell. He was a great guy. I put him in prison. That's right. Yes, remember, he was sold by his brothers to an e Egyptian, and he sold him to Potiphar, and, and Potiphar uh, gave him a little bit of liberty, and first thing you know, that was taken from him. And there he sat in prison crying, crying. God had to strip it. Amen. Notice this. But all the time I believe in that prison, he could remember that the vision said that he was going to sit on a throne. Amen. Amen. Remember now what, the, what, what Brother Bram told you. He said you have dreadful times to go through. God's revealing his own word. Dreadful times. But remember, you're his bride. And in, in the end, God is going to do what he told you. He cannot lie. He's going to heal you, Phyllis. Amen. Praise God. He's going to heal you. Glory to God. You may be seated. Now, now notice this here, but all the time I believe in that prison, he can remember that the vision said he was going to sit on a throne and his brothers were going to bow down to him because he knew that his gift had come from God and he knew that it had to come to pass. And I know that when God said, my God, way years ago, Jacob graced Joseph's perfection, all this persecution, but I knew one day it was prison. But I'm coming out today. Praise God. I'm coming out of here, brother. House of hell. Give way. Praise God. He knew it had to come to pass. If we could only keep that in our minds, that according to the word of God, in these last days, he's going to have a church, going to have a people, and these things that he promised, he's going to do them. He said he would. And we're living in the time with the word. He's just trying to get us to be real prisoners now, locked in with him. It's not that he cannot do it, but he can't find a prison to do it with. You hear what I said? It is not that he cannot or will not do it what he said he would do through Malachi 4. But he can't find the people to become a prisoner. So he can do it with them. Harness them to the word. Then he will, these signs shall follow. Same ministry, you'll see it. If he can find some prisons of love. Praise God. You may be seated. Did you get it? Uh, how, how many is getting this here? Okay, amen. Page 25, Pharaoh made Joseph his son. Christ makes his prisons of love his sons, and he gave them power to 
same thing, the same he had, same thing he had. St. John 14, 12. He that believeth on me, see, the works that I do, shall he do also. Even more than this shall he do. Now, he's going to do this here. Oh, yeah. But he had to wait till the seed got ripe. Then they had to be identified with the word. They had to be stripped. Oh. You see? And as you strip, you add. As you strip, you add. You're stripping the world off, and you're putting on Christ. You're putting on your wedding gentlemen. Praise God. Okay, now the prisoner of love of Christ may be seated. Becomes empowered by his king, who is Christ. Amen. And verily I say unto you, if you say unto this mountain, see even the spoken words coming in. Amen. Be moved. Don't doubt in your heart. But believe that what you said will come to pass. You have what you said. Then if you abide in me, my word in you, you, you see, if you're yoked to me, because him and his word is the same. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. And the word was made flesh and dwell among us. The same yesterday, today, and forever. If you abide in me, not here, abide in me here and there and there and there, but abide in me. Stay there. Get in the prison. Stay there. Glory. Abide in me and my word in you and ask what you will or say what you will, it'll be done. He has power. Knows before he can come out, he had to be taken out and shaved. A few things had to be shaved off before he could be, meet his king. Do you see it, Tim? We have to get rid of our attitudes and uh, all these funny ways before we meet our king. The king is here. He can't wait no longer. He'll clean it out in September. I can't wait no longer. I have some predestinated Caleb's there that are waiting for me. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Glory. Maybe see that. Oh, God sometimes takes his people out like that and shaves a few of their own wills off. He shows them that they can't do just what they wanted to do. Thank you, Jesus. You cannot do it. You will not do it. What you want to do. Yes, sir. Before they can come into full power, here it is, and be a love slave, not even a love slave yet, and be a love slave to Christ, they have to be shaved off and then presented. Sometimes he takes them to the deserts to do that, to shave them off and then bring them out the anointed ones to fulfill the purpose that he's ordained them to be. See what I mean? Brother, we at the end time. Did you get it? Oh, hallelujah. We're in that time. The shaving time is on. Oh, by the word. Before you get the power. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. My, 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 my. Did you get it now? You may be seated. Okay, you got it. And speaking about Joseph, he was the perfect type of Christ. We all know that. Joseph represented perfection. We all know that. Joseph represented the capstone. We all know that. Joseph represented the word, the fourth light upon the word. The restoration of the tree. We all know that. See, I'm telling you what you know. I'm reminding you of the things that Malachi foretold you. The word, the fourth light upon the word. Joseph represented that. And we know what Abraham was election, Isaac calling, Jacob grace, Joseph perfection. He was also called a capstone. And said nothing against him. That's God working his way out. That's why last Sunday here the Holy Spirit raked this church around here. Ain't nothing against me. Ain't nothing against these people here with the Holy Ghost. That's why he raked the thing around here. There's nothing against Joseph. People sitting around lying and backbiting, praise God. There's nothing against us. It is God in us working his way out. Amen. Glory. There's nothing against you. What are you sitting there bound for? Lose him and let him go. You're free. Hallelujah. Praise God. You're free. Shackles of the world. Shackles of money. Shackles of this. Sh big shot. Shackles. Bound. 
this is the only thing that means anything here. If the Lord will tarry for a year, if the Lord will tarry for two years. Amen, brother. Praise God. People look at this world like it's, a, it's 10, 15 years left. Someone be presidents and everything else. I want to be a Christian. I want to be a statue of a perfect man. That's what I want to be. Hallelujah. Praise God. Nothing against me. Nothing against you. You may be seated. Joseph, the capstone word. When the church and the word becomes the same, same thing exactly, perfection. On going beyond the camp, page uh, 9 and 10. Look at Joseph, the life. Love of the father, hated of his brothers because he was a seer and they hated him without a cause. That was the only cause they could hate him for. They hate, that's, that's why they hate him, because he's spiritual. They can't put the thing on one thing that he did to them. It's all manufactured lies from the life factory. Praise God. Are you following what I'm saying? They hate him because it's life. Because God was blessing him, prospering him all the time. The more they curse him, the more revelation he got. Praise God. That was the only cause they could hate him for. Here, perfect type of today. The prophet is typing Joseph perfection over there to here, to, to the bride today. Then why don't they preach it? Praise God. Exactly the church again. They hate the spiritual thing. They won't even preach it. Amen. They hate it. They hate the life of the word capstone. They hate it. Because Joseph represents that. They hate it when you say Joseph perfection. They hate it. The Revelation of Jesus Christ, page 53. Now Joseph, when he was born, he was hated by his brethren. Is that right? Now I want to show you Joseph represents the spirit-filled church, unquote. There you are. Another quote. He represents the spirit-filled church. Now, I'll unveil this soon because you're going to get it yourself. And Joseph had a what? He had a rainbow coat. Spirit-filled. The rainbow coat, that's what it means. Seven voices. Huh? Seven lamps. Seven stars, seven messages, seven messengers, seven rainbows, seven eyes, seven lamps, seven spirits, spirit filled. Praise God, spirit filled. Maybe seated. You got it? Is that right? Now we know what it represents. Praise God, spirit filled. Spiritual thing, they hate it. Amen. Perfect type of the day, the church again. They must hate you. Amen. Then when you hate, then you're good company. Remember, Joel had a, had a seven-color rainbow coat. Is that right? Okay, Israel in the church. I might as well go ahead. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Amen. Page 24, Israel in the church. Now watch, election in Abraham, justification Isaac, and grace in Jacob. And perfection in Joseph. Not one thing recorded against Joseph. That's the perfection. And they're looking for flaws against his head and they can't find it. And God keeps blessing it. You'd think that they would know better or something. That's why I had to kind of uh, scold some people there last week. Like, what are you looking for? Right in the same church? You looking for flaws too? Thought you was outside. Amen. Don't, don't, don't do it here. This is your church. Amen. Amen. You identify with the shame and the glory. Amen. You from New York? I'm from New York. Yes, sir. What's wrong? Yeah, I'm from New York. Yeah, why? Oh, there's a lot of sin there. There's a lot of sin in your place, in your small town. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, a lot of crack. A lot of crack in your place, too. 
So, so what? There's prostitutes. You have prostitutes too. They don't even stay on the corner. They're in the house with the husband. Come on, praise God. I mean, it's small town stuff. It's filthy. The whole earth is filthy. The prophet said so, praise God. Filthy. Filthy. So, Susia. Susia. Praise God. Hey, man, you may be seated. Some of these guys talking about New York, praise New York, this New York, that they can't stand it. Well, praise God, I can't stand where you come from either. Amen. Amen. God put me here, praise God. God will take care of me. Amen. Praise God. I'd rather be here than anywhere else in the world because God said so. I'm a prisoner of love in New York. Amen. If you, should, if you should hear this tape, that's the way I always felt. That's the way I always will feel. If you don't like it, then turn the tape off, praise God. Sick of this people around, I'm supposed to be your friends and so forth. Talking about this and talking about that. Amen. Maybe Sid. Oi, oi, Gavay. Praise God. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Praise the Lord. Where am I at? Amen. Well, that's right. Joseph, talking about his coat. Amen. Uh, then, he, uh, then he has love, which we can't move, leave from this. His father gave him a coat of many colors. Is that right? Now, if you watch uh, that robe without seam, which represents the Holy Spirit that covered his being, and today is the Holy Spirit that covers the church, and the robe of many colors, and there's seven colors in the rainbow, and there's seven perfect colors, is all the colors you, uh, uh, we have, and they blend together, making a rainbow. And a rainbow is, in the Bible, means a covenant. And God made his covenant with Noah for no more water for the next time uh, he gave him, for the, the, he gave him the rainbow sign. Right. You mean if God would take and put a seven-color rainbow coat on, on me, that that's a covenant? Huh? Oh, wow, that's really something, huh? My, let me aspire to be a love slave. Praise God. Yes, page 25, a rainbow, a covenant that God had made through Abraham, through Isaac, through Christ, through the church, by the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The robe of the seven colors that was upon Joseph, that was upon Jesus, is upon the church today, protected. The body was covered up by the robe. And watch, the church is not you. It's the Holy Ghost that's got you covered. You ain't the church. You're not the word. He's the word. He just borrowed your spirit and your body to come in there. So the bride is the word that you let come in your heart. Amen. He just pulled you out because you predestinated. That's why you're supposed to forsake everything. You're not from here. You only slipped down here because of Adam and Eve's sin. You'd have never been here. You'd have been spoken, praise God, in your season. If it wasn't for the sin, you don't belong here. Where was thou when the sons of God shouted for joy in the morning and started saying together, praise God, you were there. You don't belong here. But you only come down here for a testimony. I come from God and I'm going back to God. People anchoring down in the world, anchoring down in the big business, anchoring down in this. Get out of there. Pull your anchor up out of there. Hook it into Christ. Praise God. Occupy until he come. God give you a good job, fine. But the Lord may come tomorrow. He wants you to go to school a little bit more. That's all right, if the Lord wills. But they ain't got nothing to do with Christ. Hey, occupy until he come. Learn how to do that. Learn how to take the world, this part of it, and also take Christ at the same time. Learn how to live in the world. Learn how to be blessed in the world with a good job and money, whatever. That's a blessing. Thank the Lord for it, but put everything in Christ. Amen. Praise God. People get all turned around. Next thing they become a big shot. Then they get a spirit up on them. Education, education. I'll be the president in 10 years. We won't even be here in 10 years. I hope we won't be here for a year. 
You may be seated. I ain't looking for no two years, three years, four years. I'm looking to go out of here, praise God, for a short, quick message. Shake the whole nation and get out of here. You may be seated. Praise God. Amen. And the church is not you. It's the Holy Ghost that's got you covered with the, with the blood. God's covenant predestinated for the foundation of the world. Amen. That's the church. When it's baptized, it's robed with the Holy Ghost, with power. Oh, my, he says here. Praise God. Yes, sir. My, praise God. You got it? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Not you. Joseph's seven-color rainbow coat also represents the glory of the Lord covering his church because he is in his church. Amen. That's a quote from Revelation chapter 4, page 615. So the coat means that God has dropped the glory. Like it showed on the wall last week. That glory is already here with Joseph. It came with Joseph. I mean, did you catch that there? That's why I replayed it again. It's already here. I'm going to prove it to you today. I don't want you sitting around here waiting for since 88. It's already been here. Hallelujah. It's already here. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. He showed it on the wall. He had it the first time at 2 p.m. That's why the first time, 2 p.m., you got it? And nobody saw it because they wasn't around here except Brother Balomo and Brother Garcia and Brother Frank Puma. They saw it, 2 p.m. But he brought it back. He said, replay it back so they can see it. And Brother Robledo was standing right here, and Brother Baloma came in and said, he said, look to the, look to the. That's why the first time, 2 p.m., you got it? And nobody saw it because they wasn't around here except Brother Balomo and Brother Garcia and Brother Frank Puma. They saw it, 2 p.m. But he brought it back. He said, replay it back so they can see it. Uh, look to the wall. There it is. Amen. He stayed here about 10 minutes. He, he's still there. He's with his word. Amen. So we get, get the unbelief out of here by September 30th. Now he can manifest himself. Get that resenting spirit out of here. Praise God. He can anoint your spirit and anoint. Amen. Get all them resenting spirits out of here. Oh, praise God. Now you got what it is now? It represents the glory of the Lord covering his church because he is in his church. The word is in here. So he covers it with his seven color rainbow glory. Hebrews uh, page 269. Amen. This great forerunner has gone before us making a way. He's become from spirit the great fountains of the rainbow of God who had no beginning, no end. He was forever God. This ray of light went forth. It was a ray of love. That's the main one, red. The next color follows, which was blue and blue and trueness. Next follow after that was the other colors of, this, of, this, of the seven perfect colors, which is, watch, the seven spirits. Oh, the seven spirits is the seven colors. Amen. Of God that went from him, great, that great fountain or that great diamond that Jesus spoke of, that great diamond that's chipped to reflect these colors. A chip off the old block. Praise God. The reflection is a perfection. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God was made flesh and dwelt among us that he might reflect his goodness and mercy among us by gifts and signs and wonders. The whole big rainbow has become in a theophany made in an image like man. Yet he wasn't a man. He didn't have to have flesh yet. He was a theophany. Moses said, I can see you. God hit him in a rock. When he passed by, Moses saw it looked like the back of a man. Moses passed by and I said, hide your face up in the mountain, praise God. Seeing the back of a man, a theophany. Oh, seven rainbows, amen, <laughs> praise God. Glory to God. Oh, I'll make a Presbyterian shout, amen. Praise God. Glory to the seven manifold spirit of God and those seven spirits were perfect which means seven manifestations of the Holy Spirit of the seven church ages at the seven seats of mercy for the people. Yes, sir. Praise God. Amen. See what Joseph's seven color rainbow coat represents? See why they curse it? It's the very essence of the message. It represents seven church ages, seven stars, seven lamps, seven angels, seven messengers, seven messengers, seven voices. Could it also represent seven thunders? 
Could it? Could it be? I don't know. I just state what it said. Could it represent seven thunders? You may be seated. If it does, then the th seven thunders caps the pyramid. If it does. It's almost time. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Yes, sir. My, I don't know which way to go here. Should I cut it off? No? Turn me around. Pull. Amen. What do you want? Silver go have I none. Such as I have. I give it unto you. A revelation of Jesus Christ. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Now, from here on, pull for the Holy Ghost. Pull for your healing. Pull for this, pull for that, pull. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. You, sh you should shout. You, you got Courtney. You got Trevor. You got your daughter-in-law. You got your daughter. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. Ask what you will. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. You may be seated. Glory, where was we at? Amen. Oh, I said, could it, also, could it also represent seven thunders? If it does, then the seven thunders caps the pyramid. That's what I said. Then the glory come down. Praise God. Amen. All the, those seven spirits was made up. God, made up of God was perfection. Seven perfect spirits come down from God for perfection. Now, the only way we can come back to perfection is to come back with that perfection which is God then we come to perfection and then we have eternal life so I'm preaching the way for you to, to come to perfection which is Joseph perfection not Jacob grace that's the grace of God and you go on sinning and doing this and doing that and making errors we ain't talking about that we talking about Christ in you the person God working his way out Nothing against you. Ha, yeah, yeah. Glory. Amen. Maybe seated. Church, is that what Joseph Perfection means? Be serious today and think. Joseph Perfection means capstone, the word, the seed word. That's what it means. That's what Brother Bram said. Now put this seed word, Joseph Perfection capstone. In this season, word, bride, time. And see what happens in this season in time of harvest. I challenge you to do it. Amen. See, there must be a manifestation, maybe seated, of Joseph perfection, the reflection of Jesus Christ. Or we will not go in the rapture. Joseph perfection. Perfection represents making up the headstone. Now I'm getting ready to come here now. <laughs> Amen. Oh, you are you make it up. Oneness, okay. Page thirty-one. He called out the elect to make the Lutheran. He called out the elect of the Lutherans to make the Wesleyans. Make them up. Call the people together, they become the Wesley Revival. See where I'm coming from? 
He called out the elect out of, uh, he called out the, Mickey Wesleyan, he called out the elect out of that to make the Pentecostals. Amen. Now, he's calling the elect Pentecostals out to make the headstone. The headstone is the word. Then if you have the word and you have the word and you have the word, then you got the word, the word that comes together, that's the headstone. That's Joseph Perfection. And with that goes a ministry like Christ to bring down the headstone, to bring up the dead. You see what I'm saying? Oh, hallelujah. You may be seated. You, you, you getting it? Huh? Hey! See that there? That's what it's all about. Not your mind battles. Forget them. Christ. Let me say it again. You may be seated. He called out the most elect Pentecostal. Now he's calling the elect Pentecostal out to make the headstone to come into it. Do you know what I'm saying? The prophet said that the headstone is the word. Joseph perfection. And Christ, the dynamics, like the first bride, wants to come into it. But you had got to come to a word season where you become ripe and you identify, your identification will be by the word. Oh, wow. <laughs> then he can come into you. <laughs> Not just a little birth. I'm talking about Christ, the fruit. In the top of the tree. Maybe see that. The seventh thunder seed is a seed, word seed. Well, plant that seed in good ground and you get Galatians 5. The fruit. You understand now? You get ninefold fruit. Oh, hallelujah. How many just got what I said just now? I don't want to go no further than that. Thank you. Now he's calling the elect Pentecostals out. Amen. To make the headstone to come into it. A very same kind of ministry. Dropping right in on it. Just dropping on you one day. Whew. Calling his children from all walks of life. Oh, hallelujah. Just call him. Come. Adam, Adam, where art thou? Come, come, amen. Don't worry about it, be all right. Praise God, are you free? Hallelujah, Jesus Christ makes you free. Glory to God, amen, you're free. You ain't going back in that denomination, praise God. Hallelujah. Touch not and taste not pots and pans. Amen, praise God. Amen. I'm good. You ain't good. Ain't one good in the Bible, praise God. Jesus Christ is the only good one. I'm a nice guy. You're not a nice guy. Praise God. Maybe seated. Oh, do you understand, church? Get the revelation of Joseph perfection, the headstone, capstone, Holy Spirit itself in this seed time, bride time. Amen, brother. Unveil the chart. Glory. Praise God. I asked sister, I got, I got this thought Thursday. I think it was Thursday or Wednesday. Like what you see? Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Don't worry over here. You're on the back side of the Bible over there. Seven thunders. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So I asked Sister Eileen Riddle to do it for me. And so she's the one that drew up the chart. Amen. And made the chart. Amen. We thank God for all the talent in here. Praise God. 
Is that what you want to be? Huh? Okay, a statue of a perfect man. Now you, you may be seated, you are making up the capstone right now. I mean, you know, it, it blows the mind out. I'm making up the capstone. Yeah, you. You get that there? My God. You are making up the capstone, the fourth line, the word, to come to perfection. For what? For Hebrews 11, 39, that they would either not made perfect. That they can't come up unless somebody on this earth come to perfection that the prophet preached. That's what I'm preaching. Amen. You are Joseph perfection, the top part of the foundation. Let it sink into you now. You look at it. Now you're on the top part, Joseph Perfection. Oh, let's put it this way. You have a rainbow coat. <laughs> now you look at that, aren't you? Now, but you gotta have Paul's faith in you. That's faith. And Malachi 4 re return back to that. Restore that back. You gotta have Arrhenius. That was a seed also. And Columba. And, uh, and Martin, those were seeds, seed churches. And you find that the, they were baptized with the Holy Ghost. They had the, they had the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They had signs, wonders, and miracles. And the prophet of God said on page 85, adoption, that they were coming unto something. Amen. Unto adoption. See, because the first church was adopted. Praise God. And all the way down, they were coming back to their first love. But they were seeds of God. They were the seed. And they kept falling to the ground, falling to the ground. Signs, wonders, and miracles, baptism of the Holy Ghost, praise God, speaking in tongues, falling in the ground. Amen. And finally fell in the ground in Luther. And I mean, in Columba. For a, few, uh, for a thousand years there. Over a thousand years, they fell in the ground. So four enemy agents destroyed God's uh, fruit tree. Took off the fruit, took off the leaves, took off the bark, and destroyed the roots. Denomination. I will restore, saith the Lord. I'll bring it right back in the evening time it shall be light. Hallelujah. Praise God. You look at it, aren't you? Praise God. Amen. Then he, if he had four enemy, uh, 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 four enemies to destroy it, then you got to have, have four lights to bring it back because 1,500 years of darkness. Praise God. Then there was the light of Luther. Amen. A little flashlight to walk around. Praise God. Hallelujah. Pray. But they can see. Oh, my, just soaking it in there. Now, all of Malachi 4's message promises lays in the top part of the foundation. It is the age, it is the people that receive the seven seals and seven thunders. It has all of the promises. Now, you figure out what, what age that is. Brotherly kindness age. At the very top. But now... You got to be pulled out of that. Are you getting it? A stone and fit it into the slot that says Holy Spirit. Huh? And that will make up the bride. That will be the word and the rainbow coat. Glory. My, 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 my. Let me see how this thing looks here. Amen. Oh, yeah, here we are. You got to come out of here and go in there. In there. Between love and brotherly kindness, you'll find a Joseph perfection, the bride. Praise God. Amen. Amen. That's where you're going to find yourself in the Holy Spirit. I'm going to prove it to you. Now you got a revelation now. Now you know where you're at. You got to put that coat on. Amen. You may be seated. You ought to be a sign of this time. Amen. Let me hurry. On the sign of the time, page 16, New York City. Amen. He said, now... He says, when the enemy coming like a flood, the Spirit of God will raise a standard against it. And, and watch. And now we have left the Pentecostal age. 
Now, in New York City, Brother Branson, we left that age. Well, then, pray tell, where did we go at? Where did we go? You go into the Word. Where's the Word? There were seven rainbows, seven spirits, seven eyes, seven lamps, seven messages, seven manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. When the enemy comes, amen. Now we have left the Pentecostal age. Uh, who is that? Jacob Grace. We left that. I declare it to be so. We're in Joseph perfection. Let me say it again. Abraham Luther, Isaac Wesley, Jacob Pentecostals. We have left the Pentecostal age. I knew we would one day because I prophesied it. Jacob Grace, Joseph perfection. Here we are. Who told you that? <laughs> I say it. Amen. Who give you the authority to say that there? I feel like saying it. I just feel like saying it. Amen. Like I said, everything else. Amen. We left the Pentecostal age. Maybe seated. Then where are we at, church? Are we in a little slut just under the capstone called the Holy Spirit on the chart? Are we there? Huh? Any brother Hunt? Daniel 70 weeks, page 30, paragraph 129. We have got to be magnetized to that headstone. That headstone is the Holy Ghost, unquote. Oh, the headstone is the Holy Ghost. Well, there's the Holy Ghost. To magnetize you to it before the great camp of love, Jesus himself. And his corporal body descends from the heavens in the rapture. But this Joseph Affection Bride's got to be magnetized with that seven color rainbow coat. She's got to be stripped. Oh, praise God. My God. You getting it now? Does it mean that, my brethren? Sirs, what time is it then? Where we at? Let me read it again. I read it before, page 47. Amen. Glory to God. It might be closer than what you think. It's got me scared. Oh, I haven't done enough. 1962. Where are we at? Time shall be no more. He announced that time is over. What happens? What happens? Could that be so? Now, brethren, seriously, think. If it is, then the pyramid is capped by the seven thunders. Well, what, what, what caps the pyramid there just before the, the love? Seven spirits, seven rainbows. Is that the thunders? Let me read it again. If it is, then the pyramid is capped by the seven thunders. You remember the pyramid message? There it is. It is the capstone. What did it do? The Holy Spirit capped off the individual and sealed it. When we add to our faith, righteous, godliness, and faith, and so forth, we kept adding until we got seven things. And the seventh one was love, which is God, which was charity. Yes, to brotherly kindness, add charity. That was the seventh thing from the faith. It makes it eight. Whoa. Make you a new creation, praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, sir. Which is uh, the seventh one, which is love, which is God. That's how he makes the individual. He caps him and seals him with the Holy Spirit. Where's the Holy Spirit at? Between uh, capstone and brotherly kindness. Sealed with that rainbow Holy Spirit. My God. And you got in you all the word from Paul, Arrhenius, Martin, Columba, Luther, Wesley, Malachi 4. Then he caps you or seals you. With what? The Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. One brother says, I said, amen. Yes, sir, brother. Praise God. I think the minds are totally blown here this morning. Huh? The minds are blown out. That's why. <laughs> See, uh, if it is in the pyramids camped by the seven thunders, oh, my. Y you remember? Oh, yeah. Here it is. That's how it makes the individual. He caps him and seals him with the Holy Spirit. Then if that be so, he has got seven church ages. There they are. That he has had seven mysteries, see it's on there, that has been sounded away. 
and they fought for to bring back. And now the headstone comes to camp off the church. Now, wait a minute. Is the thunders camping the church or the headstone? Huh? Does the thunders mean that, my brethren? Sirs, is that where we're at? Oh, my. And praise God. If, the, if it is, then the, the pyramid is capped by the seven thunders. And now the headstone comes to cap off the church. Does the thunders mean that, my brethren? Sir, is that where we're at? Is the seven thunders the headstone, capstone that caps the pyramid? Is it Joseph uh, Rainbow Coat? Seven spirits, that great rainbow? Like a theophany come out of that great ray of love? Whew. My God, does that little slot called the Holy Spirit represent the bride being honed out? Is that the honing? Is that the stripping? Huh? From the world and things of the world and the lust and everything else? Why? Because you're leaving here? Not one iota will be on you. We'll be a perfect man on the earth. Hallelujah. You talking about power? You be ready for the third pull in, brother. When you be ready with that spoken word, when that press comes down, hallelujah. Glory. Amen. Does that little slide, maybe see that called the Holy Spirit, represent the bride being honed out? That, that, that the big capstone can catch right into her to bring up the dead in Christ? Huh, does it mean that? Yes, sir. Somebody told me to read here. Where was that at? Too? Yes, sir. My, my. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, here it is. I got it. While you're right there, I better read this here. The Statue of Perfect Man, page 65. Add to your faith virtue, and to add to your virtue knowledge, to your knowledge temperance. You got it right there. To your temperance patience, to your patience godliness, to your godliness brotherly love, to your brotherly love the Holy Spirit. There it is. So there's brotherly kindness, there's brotherly love, number seven, and two brotherly love, add the Holy Spirit. Brother Coleman, is that what you're talking about today? Yes. Joseph perfection releases the Holy Spirit itself. <laughs> got you right here. I got, you, got about a word. Praise God. I ain't doing anything wrong. And Christ love will come. Hallelujah. Do you see it? Add them seven virtues. That's the honing. But where is it at? Down in Paul's age? No. In that little slut. The top of the foundation. Joseph perfection. Don't you see on the, on the side over there? Praise God. I'll get to it, amen. Oh, hallelujah. Did you get it? To your brotherly love, the Holy Spirit and Christ will come. Because just beneath him, watch, beneath him, the Holy Spirit, you see it? Is the Spirit of Christ, of Jesus Christ, into the church to manifest those virtues. Just beneath the Holy Spirit. Was the Spirit of Christ in every age? Baptism of the Holy Ghost, bang, 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 until it comes to the Holy Spirit itself. I don't know. Praise God is right in front of you. Amen. I'm reading right out of the book here. So the Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Ghost was in Paul's age in Arenius and Martin, Columba, and, and so forth. And then the Holy Spirit came up with a blade, amen, a, a portion of the Holy Spirit. And Luther, amen, Wesley, then what happened then? The great open door on the other side over here, come in. Just between Wesley. You see the open door over there? Ain't that Philadelphia church age. And you read it? I got it. Oh, I'm a little ahead of myself here. Revelation 3, 7, and 8. I set before the open door, and a prophet nails it down. See, it's not in the Wesleyan age, not in the Laodicean age. The open door was, was between. That's why you can have a Welch revival. Between. Hallelujah. Praise God. I said before you, open door. The deity of Jesus Christ. The baptism in Jesus' name. The baptism of the Holy Ghost. I said it before you. 
no man can open, no man can shut it. Praise God. And it's been here, and then he had a prophet born that picked those three steps up and always preach it coming right down to the headstone. It bypassed the Pentecostal denomination. After Azusa Street, 1910, 1912, they denominated three gods, assemblies of God in the whole thing. And the prophet was born in 1909. Praise God, he was ready. God knew that they would denominate. He said, I, said, I put an open door when the Wesleyan Methodist Church set in, old Lion Church and old Lutheran Church set in there. On that third step, I set an open door, the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. Hallelujah. Outside of them things. I gave a revival over in Wales. I gave another one over the, to the inn over them in Azusa Street. Little cross-eyed colored man. Brother Seymour, amen. And from there, it spun across America. Amen. You can box God up, maybe seated. Then it became the nomination in the 1920s and 1930s, and God was so sick of it. After they rejected him in 1909 through there, World War uh, I came. A temporary judgment. Influenza killed millions. You understand it now? Because God was disgusted with them. They denominated again. They had the Lutheran church, and they had the West, and then they had the Pentecostal church. Denomination. Then it came World War II. Amen. And then God had some independent people praying. Amen. And then the prophet came to the end of the Laodicea. Praise God. Laodicea at the end, but he put an open door. The baptism of the Holy Ghost, the deity of Christ. No man can shut, no man can open it. Oh, you're looking right at it. It's in the Philadelphia church age. I don't even have to read it. In between. You got it now? In between Wesley age and in between the Laodicea, he put an open door. And then he put the open door in Jeffersonville and built a little tabernacle. There was an open door in the 1930s. And it came from all over. He gave one man signs, wonders, and miracles. 1940s, and then he went out to the world. That was the open door. He brought a revival to the world. That was the open door. I'm so glad to be associated with Malachi 4. I'm so happy today, praise God. He kept that door open. Praise God. Then he brought his message, the capstone, and called us out of Laodicea that we, we might make up the headstone. Then we are stones that slot it. Do you see what I'm saying there? Praise God. You got to get this thing here now. You slot it in there. You may be seated. In here. A little stone. Another one there, there, across. You make up the whole thing. You, are, you become the Holy Spirit. You, you escape the corruption and the lust. That's in here in this Laodicean age. The sex, the demons, the whole thing. You are the escaped ones. Oh, praise God. You see an open door in there? And it comes straight on up into the Holy Ghost. Here was the birth in there. The babe, Christ, with the gifts. Then it come on down to the word from the prophet. The person. Oh my. Then he drops a coat on you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And here you come walking with the rainbow coat walking. The word, the word. Pulling the gospel. Harness to the word by the Holy Ghost. Don't you want to pull the gospel? Huh? Glory. See that there? My God, this is amber here. That's amber. And here's the rainbow. Here's the glory of the Lord. Not the Lord, but the glory of the Lord. The Lord has a body himself, a corporal body. That's him coming in the air, Jesus. Glory. Amen. 
Oh my. Well, let me finish off here. Praise God. You got it? Praise God. I think uh, minds are totally blown out. Praise God. Oh, that's right. Now we have left the Pentecostal age. Did we leave it? Yes. Amen. Everybody left it? Yes. Don't, don't slide back now, Jacob. Glory. Now we're coming to where? Like in the pyramid. Not pyramid doctrine now, but I mean like as the pyramid. The headstone. When it comes to fit, it's got to be honed. See? There's got to be a ministry in the church, the true church of the living God, to where when the headstone comes, Christ, or the ministry of Christ, Christ will fit right in together perfectly. Who's Christ? Jesus. Where will he fit? Into the ministry of Christ in the little slot. Because he don't fit on the Lutheran age. It's too wide. It's shaping. It don't fit on the Wesley age. It don't fit on the brotherly kindness. It's too wide. So some stones are called out. Narrow right down for the capstone to fit. You see your calling, brethren? Not many mighty, not many wise. Oh, praise God. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Do you see that there? A stone that's in an, an adoption, fitted stones. Glory to God. Mm. Yes, sir. Amen. Let me hurry and finish off here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Glory. It's got to be, it, it got to be home. It's got to be a ministry in the church, the true church of the living God, to where when the headstone comes, Christ or the ministry of Christ and Christ. See, the ministry of Christ and Christ. The seven rainbow colors is the ministry of Christ. <laughs> and Christ is love, L-O-V-E, Jesus. They are fit together. Don't, don't you understand that you become his spirit? You're his bride? He's the male and you the female. You came out of his side, the Holy Spirit. And he comes right down into his own spirit. He is the word. And your identification with the word by signs, wonders, and miracles, and oh, love, and peace, and joy, and temperance, walking on this earth. Oh, my, I can hardly, my, God contain myself. Thank you. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. It, it'll fit together. Then that brings back the redeemed to take the whole house of God to glory. The Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, through the great Reformation ages that come out and gave their lives and persecution and things for the kingdom of God. But that stone is coming. Yes, sir. It certainly will come. God will send it. It'll fit all the building together upon it. See, now we see these signs as we see the ministry from Christ beginning to narrow up now to the complete ministry of Christ in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. You see what he's saying here now? And he says here, he says now, a uh, 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 notice here, uh, he says, um, under Luther, it was the same Holy Spirit justification, then sanctification under Wesley, the messages, then the baptism of the Holy Spirit making three, and where they come, open door. You got it now? It's the Philadelphia church age. Making three. Three. Not three steps of grace, but three stations, I might call it. Now, this last great step. Now, what, what, what are the four steps? Huh? Luther, Wesley, Pentecostals, and Joseph. This last great step of Joseph must come into the perfection that the Holy Spirit, where's that little slot? That the Holy Spirit has to live in that church so perfectly, it'll make the head and the body unite together. You are the thing that's going to pull up uh, all the Pentecostals and all the Wesleyans and all the open door. Amen. All the Lutheran, all praise God, Columba and Martin and Irenaeus and Paul and the early bride and all the way back the bride types down to Adam. You are the Holy Spirit that's going to pull them up from the grave to connect the body to the head. 
then we'll be on the earth. My God, the seven rainbows will sweep across the earth. Up will come Malachi 4. Up will come the Pentecostal. Praise God, praise God, all the way down. Then we will stand, the redeem of the earth will stand on the earth. And Brother Branham will point to the sky screaming, Behold the Lamb of God, praise God. Don't you want to be there? Oh, don't, don't miss it. Don't miss it, praise God, for nothing. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated. Oh, my. See, he must live in us now so perfectly. Amen. It'll make the head and the body. You see the body, brotherly kind, is all the way down to faith. That's the body. Amen. And he pulls us up out of there to connect. We are the connecting thing there. Praise God. My God. So perfect to make the head and the body unite together. See, see, that's the body. He is the head in the body. Now we find that he promised these last days that that would be done. That's what he said. It would be done. Then let it be. Now we're coming to, like in the period when the ministry of Christ was living in the church, to bring back the redeemed to take the bride to glory. Amen. Praise God. You got it, friends? Then what is it then? The reflection is the perfection. Joseph perfection manifests as a reflection of Jesus Christ. Don't fear, little sister. There is a man that can turn on the light. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Another turn. We got a three-way bulb. The shout, the voice, the trump. Praise God. Amen. All right. All right. Amen. Now you got it. Joseph perfection is the top part of the foundation. Amen. Then if you want to look at it, you got Luther there. Then you got Wesley. You got, you got the open door, the Pentecostals coming right on through there. Then you got Joseph Perfection in the top part of Laodicea. Uh, uh, stones fitted to the cap. Amen. You fitted in the Holy Spirit. There's no place else to be fitted. Because he cursed Laodicea, the whole thing. And spewed it out of his mouth in the tribulation period. And up goes the bride. See that open, catch that open door. The Holy Spirit between Laodicea and the capstone is the bride. Joseph of perfection fitted stones into the capstone. The reflection of Jesus Christ on the earth, a perfect man. Here we come. Praise God. Just a, a, Do I have about 10 minutes? Okay. I, want, I got this far. I want to just nail it down. I'm finished. Praise God. All right. Masterpiece. Amen. Masterpiece, page 14. Amen. But when uh, uh, now the foundations was laid through faith, love, grace, and to perfection through the patriarchs. Now the body work that come on to this great masterpiece was the prophets. Remember now he sets the monument on top of a perfect uh, foundation. That's where he set the monument at. Amen. Praise God. And then the body work, which was the word. I hope you can read it. See the prophets, not the laws, the prophets. For the prophets was the vindicated word which makes the body, not the patriarchs. The prophets that were the word. And of course, I'll, I'll cut it here. The foundation was laid and then Jesus come, the reflection of God and so forth. He was the head. Amen. So I'm trying to uh, uh, cut it down a little bit here. Amen. Okay, now uh, the, the perfection of the word. And then the foundation was by four patriarchs, but the body work was built by the word, the prophets. Perfect reflection again came in Christ. Okay, today... Seven church ages, then the capstone. Okay, on page 20. Amen. We find out that in Joseph, that Joseph was a peculiar born boy, the last, the last, the top part of the foundation where the masterpiece was to be built upon. Well, then where is he at? He's not down with Paul. <laughs> He's at the top part. He follows Luther, Wesley, and the Pentecostals. And they're not down there. That's Paul, Arenas, Martin, and Columba. But it picks up Paul's faith. And then it's on, in that little slot. Faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, God, and brotherly kindness. Seven parts of the Holy Spirit. Seven manifestations of the same Holy Spirit. Which, that's the word down through there. And Malachi 4 revealed the word down through there. All the loose things that was left off. And brought it to a seven seal, seven thunder message. And you have received that message. Then you, then you are the top part of the foundation where he will lay the monument 
where he will lay the statue of a perfect man, which is those seven rainbow colors. Perfection again on the earth. And that's the monument. Be God walking, God talking, God on two feet, praise God. Then will come the headstone. The great stone that cut out of the mountain, praise God. Oh, my, my. Oh, it's so much is all there, praise God. Did you understand now what we're talking about? In this Joseph perfection, he will have the faith of Paul. But he is the top part of the foundation that was started with Luther, Wesley, and, and Pentecostals, and Joseph perfection. Because the prophet brought Joseph perfection over. I read you the quote, spirit fill, the hate the thing. Praise God is the word. Type of Christ. The word, the capstone. Oh, forget it. Amen. Maybe see that. Where the masterpiece was to be built upon. It come from faith to love to grace and it come to perfection. And so did it come from the feet of the beginning, come forth to perfection in Christ. Amen. And he, he was taken from prison to the right hand of Pharaoh that no man could speak to Pharaoh. So you take him out of your prison. Amen. After you shaved off. Sit by the right hand with power. Oh my God. And he bind the people down, the senators and all of them. Amen. Praise God. And no man can speak to Pharaoh only through Joseph. Amen. No man be able to speak to God only except you be God on earth. Praise God. They, they want something from God, they got to get it from you. You are God on earth. When you see me, you see Jesus. They'll take note that you've been with Jesus because you look you walk like you talk like him you cast out devils heal the sick praise God you just like him oh praise God amen the trumpet sounded through, throughout Egypt the blast went forth and said bow the knee everybody Joseph is coming forth oh praise God you got it now top part of the foundation perfection is in Christ and Christ is the word Joseph perfection the top of the foundation amen Christ has again centered himself like the cap on the pyramid the Holy Spirit himself Amen. Now on page 22. Now ne for nearly 2,000 years, God has, uh, I said this before, I'll just say it again, has been again making him a masterpiece because he struck at him to get a piece off of him, part of him, a rib to make a wife for him. And now the perfect masterpiece that he struck at Calvary, he got a piece off of him, is just the New Testament. That's all. This whole New Testament is part of the side. Amen. That's it. The New Testament. You can drink this blood. Amen. With this cup. Praise God. See, now it's the New Testament. Another piece. See, from the side to be fulfilled. See, the new and old is husband and wife. The Old Testament is the husband and the New Testament is the wife. The spirit part, which is that little slot. praise God that took the word in every age then the last age took took all the word Amen. that was revealed to Paul and Reigns and Martin Columbus and Luther they took every bit of it Glory. and it went back all the way back to Adam with the serpent seed and the whole thing Glory, Glory to God Glory. Amen Glory. see the new and old husband and wife and it's taking the new to old to force show the new Christ come, the masterpiece of, to fulfill that. Now his bride, watch, will fulfill everything that's in the New Testament. Another masterpiece is in the making. You thinking nothing going on now? Oh, another masterpiece is in the making. That's, <laughs> we just come to that hour. Yes, sir. Praise God. It's got to be the word. Amen. What must the bride be? It's got to be the original word, living God in the word. Now, how will she fulfill the word? Here's where I got my text from, my title. And you know what it is. I said to many years. Amen. And the life. And justification made a way for sanctification. Sanctification made a way for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The baptism of the Holy Ghost, made, which is uh, uh, the Pentecostals, made a way for the Holy Ghost itself to come right down in perfection back to the Word again to manifest itself. That's where I got it from. 
the word Brian and the whole thing. Mama. The Holy Ghost itself is the Holy Spirit, and the prophet just left that there. And he left it there. He know that it would be picked up somewhere down the way. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank God he showed it to me, brother. Amen. He said it right on page 65. Yes, sir. So now you got it? Amen. The manifest itself. Now, church, don't fail to get this. November 10, 1964, the top foundation inspiration was revealed. Jacob Grace Joseph Perfection. And I knew what was around me. And this ain't it. Praise God. All this mess around here. I, uh uh. So he gave me a vision. And I couldn't stop all that stuff around here. All that mud down there with the lily. Praise God. That ain't it. I'm getting out of here. Praise God. There's a Joseph Perfection coming. Praise God. And so that was uh, the, the top of the foundation inspiration. Then on September 20, 1974, the body work inspiration. The seven voice, the seven thunders, the seven church ages. That was the body work. Inspiration. Then on December 25, 1988, the top of the foundation revelation come again. And he spoke to me on the 23rd. He said, as Luther released justification, as Wesley released sanctification, as the Pentecostal released the Holy Ghost, so will Joseph Perfection release the Holy Ghost itself. And I waited to see what happened. Joseph Perfection, headstone, capstone, releases the Holy Ghost itself upon the bride, the dynamics to the mechanics. Oh, praise God. Do you get it now? Amen. Got one testimony for you here. I'm going to seal, seal it away here. Maybe seated. Praise God. What happened to Brother Nathaniel Goyko on December 28th? What happened on December 25th when I preached, amen, changing to the glory of Joseph perfection from Jacob Grace? Nathaniel caught that. And I couldn't figure out why was he the only one that was baptized. I said, Lord, well, there should have been more because Joseph perfection releases the Holy Ghost itself. And I couldn't figure out why was he the only one. And just Thursday here, the Lord told me. He told me to phone him. And, and I said, well, I put on the tape with, uh, on January 1st where I heard, uh, I read uh, Frank McIntyre and, and, and him and, and, and Philip Gomez, the testimony, Brother Paul. And Brother Paul caught in his testimony. He said, Lord, we thank you. He says that uh, the Joseph affection releases the Holy Ghost itself. And Brother Paul Griffin caught it. Amen. That's what happened. So therefore, I said, Brother, Brother Nathaniel, I asked him uh, Friday. I said, now, you got to tell me two things here. <laughs> I said, you didn't say anything on your testimony about what, what you got out of the Joseph Perfection message. He said, oh, yeah, okay. So then I said, write it out for me. Okay, dear Pastor Coleman, God bless you. I'm writing this letter to express my thanks to the Lord for the message that he gave you Christmas Day, December 25th, 1988 changing to the glory of Joseph Perfection from the glory of J Jacob Grace. I would like to give you a little background on, on what was going on and how the Lord was uh, dealing with me uh, before your message was spoken. When the Lord saved me on October 23rd, that's when the Holy Spirit poured out, 1988, I was so over overwhelmed with, with the fact that God loved me enough to save me. That joy would just bubble up inside and I could hardly contain myself. And uh, it still happens to this day every time I think about it. But through all that joy, I did not know what my goal on this earth was for. So, he said, why? He says, uh, I was on, uh, why, in other words, why was I on this earth? Or the purpose for being on this earth. Sure, uh, I still had all the joy that a person could ever have. But when I sat in the psychology class and the teacher and the students would be pondering on the theme, why are we on this earth? So they're trying to figure it out. <laughs> They'll never figure it out. So, and Brother Nathaniel said, therefore, when he heard the message, he caught the revelation of Joseph Perfection. <laughs> why he was put here. And he grabbed it. And he was anointed. 
he realized that he was put here to be perfect. My God, praise God, thank you. I realized I was put here to be perfect. In other words, I caught the inspiration of Jacob Grace to the perfection. Then three days later, December 28th, Wednesday night, you may be seated. The message was uh, the bridegroom coming. Him and brother Paul met in the lobby right there, and phew, he was sealed away. God baptized me with the Holy Ghost. Brother Coleman, talk about joy. My joy increased a hundredfold. In other words, he had joy to be saved on October 23rd, but now he got the Holy Ghost, a hundredfold. The joy to know that God loved me so much in spite of all what I had said. He said a lot of awful things and done that he even, cons uh, that he even considered and thought of me as his bride. Why me? I don't know, but I am sure thankful that he chose me. <laughs> so in closing, that was the background on what was going on and how the Lord was dealing with me up to the time of your December 25th message. I tell you, I, my mind is blown. I knew that there had got to be more people. I said, what? There's something wrong. And I never asked him. Then he didn't say it, so I never, the Lord just hid it away until I asked him the other day here because this message came forth. Now, I, I had a thought, the true confession of the seventh seal. And I put the scriptures and everything down. And I went and started and pencil out and write and went, the whole thing went this way. And, and, but in the beginning, he said, leave two pages in the front. You might need them. I thought I might need them. Then I got to the end. I saw I had to tear that page off of there and put down where my scriptures was and so forth. So a different set of scriptures. So the whole thing came by inspiration, just sitting down writing it. He said, call Nathaniel. P.S. Brother Coleman, I want to let you know that you have a friend. Well, thank you, Brother Nat. Uh, uh, man, God, uh, may God richly bless you, and may you, you receive your healing. Your brother in Christ, Nathaniel Quaco. Well, praise God. Amen. <laughs> amen. What did he catch? Joseph affection. And amen. The revelation. What about you today, church? You may be seated. I'm finished now. Praise God. Amen. Finally made it. What, what about you, church? Do you believe that you are finally here? Yeah. Huh? Change into the glory of Joseph's perfection from Jacob Grace, and you are fitted into that slot called the Holy Spirit? Then Joseph's perfection releases the Holy Ghost itself to you today. Yeah. If you believe that. Because this is the blending time in that Holy Spirit slot. Okay, I have to give you a quote for that. Amen. This is now, remember, remember, this is blending time now, okay? You got that. Praise God. All right. Now, you know that we are the headstone. I, I can skip that. Amen. On, there's a man that can turn on the light. Amen. On page uh, 36. There's a man that can turn on the light. Uh, when, a, uh, when a man in a foundry is making a bell, he's got a certain tone he, he has to put in it. When he's uh, setting his mold and pouring his, his iron, he puts in so much brass, so much steel, so much copper. Why? He knows just exactly how much to put in to make, to give it the right tone. Dong, dong, dong. Give it the right tone. Amen. Praise God. And, and that's what Jesus has done by his bride. He had to put in so much Luther, so much Methodist, so much Presbyterian, so much Pentecost into it. But what does he come out with? His own reflection. Why is it? Just like the pyramid message, you see, is heaping right up to his coming to the minority for the headstone. The ministry of Jesus Christ on earth has to be the same as the ministry he had, or he can't come to it. See? Just like the head to the feet, the head to feet, not the head, but the head packs the feet or makes the feet, tells the way to go. You get it? Beautifully, it's the light of the hour. Justification served his time in, ju in, in justification under Luther. That uh, Then it had to become sanctification through Wesley. Sanctification had served his time, watch, to come to the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And the baptism of the Holy Ghost has served his time. You, you hear what I'm saying now? It's already served his time until, see, until the Holy Spirit, which is only one God, blends into the church. So that little slot is blending in time. 
you will actually begin to blend into eternity. Oh, God. You, you, you're going to blend in to God, and God's going to blend into you. And so much you're going to become like God. Do you get it? The blending in time. And the baptism of the Holy Spirit has served as time to the Holy Spirit, which is only one God blends into the church or the church into Christ. That makes Jesus Christ reflected on the earth. What he promised here in the Bible might, now watch, you might not believe it. I can't make you do that. I'm only responsible for the word. See? You might not believe what I'm saying. I can't make you believe it. I'm more responsible to preach it. Maybe some of you don't aspire to be that high. I don't know. But I know I believe it. Hallelujah. See, because this is a blending time in the Holy Spirit slot until the Holy Spirit blends into the church. Oh, my. He said here about the Welch Revival, about this policeman. He tipped his hat and said, sir, they said, where is the Welch Revival at? Sir, the Welch Revival is held in here in his heart. That's it. He was the Welch Revival. Oh, God. If we can only, only understand that we are the reflection of Jesus Christ. His word made manifest. You are the reflection of his word. See, where's the Welsh Revival? What building is it in? He says, sir, it's in the heart. He was the Welsh Revival. That's right. Then what about a Joseph Perfection Revival? Where will it be at? In the heart. Glory. And today, the church ought to be Jesus Christ in action upon the earth. Because I live, you live also. And my life will be in you. The works that I do, you do also. See, the church has got to get into that place. And he promised it would do it. And it will. It's got to come to that way. So you see, that's what takes place. we got to be that way. There you are, church. Amen. You are the reflection of the word. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Praise God. I believe today as we stand on our feet. I believe as Luther message released justification and Wesley released sanctification. Pentecostal message released the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the gifts. And I believe we are finally here at the top of the foundation where Joseph Perfection, the capstone word, pulls out by a revelation, a bride stone out of layout here to be fitted, to be a fitted stone to the capstone. And the Holy Ghost itself is released upon her and comes right down in perfection and back to the word again to manifest itself. And she strips herself of everything hanging on her. And she adds to her faith seven virtues. Then charity, the power, comes upon her and makes her a word bride, prison of love unto the Lord. To be harnessed to the word by the Holy Ghost itself. And she manifests the ministry of Jesus Christ to pull the gospel. Joseph perfection releases the Holy Ghost itself to make Joseph perfection the word see manifested in good ground to be the reflection of Jesus Christ here on this earth. The reflection is the perfection. God, amen, amen. Now I want to tell you something. Praise God. Amen. A revelation all the way up and right down to Brother Nathaniel and nothing happened. In a seal, I said, well, this got to be, I don't understand. And then he told me that was nourishment. I said, oh, brother Nathaniel was a sign that Joseph perfection releases the Holy Ghost itself because his psychology was trying to class, trying to figure it out. What are we here for? How do we get here? Amen. And then he come in here and they've been pondering it. And I said, Joseph perfection, per perfection, perfect man on the earth. Like, like Adam was in the beginning. Oh, praise God. But Nathaniel had to get a revelation. God prepared him uh, with a question in his heart from school. And God answered it here on Christmas. That was a big turkey for him. Amen. A big dinner. But now, if you believe what has just been spoken, I don't know, I don't know how to say this. You don't need no more signs. Are you getting it? In other words, just as Luther preached justification, everybody was in justification. Then the elected seat was in that atmosphere, and they received justification. And same thing with Wesley and the Pentecostal couldn't help it if they were elected four blocks from Azusa Street. They get off the streetcar, and the power of God knock them down. 
Why? Because they was in the atmosphere of Jacob Grace. But what about now? Are we in Joseph Perfection? Well, then you don't have to strive no more. You are predestinated to be sealed. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Into your natural faith will come a spiritual baptism, and then our power will come in there, virtue, and knowledge will be given to you, and you will climb that pyramid all the way up to the top. All the world will be gone. All the lust will be gone. Praise God. You'll be stripped of everything in this world. Then charity will come, up, come upon you, and you'll be like Jesus. To be like Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. To be like Jesus. Don't you want to be like Jesus? How many want to be like Jesus? Praise God. Brother Joseph, would you sing it? To, to be like Jesus. May God bless you. Jesus. You understand now? We're here. But the thing you had to get a question answered. But you don't have to get a question. It's already answered. It's here. Otherwise, I'm trying to tell you as you're singing, you can be sealed. In the balcony, in the basement, in the mother's room. It's here. The Holy Ghost itself has come right down in perfection and back to the Bible again to manifest itself. May God bless you. Pray for me. To glory, all I ask to be like Him. Oh, just to be like Jesus. To Yeah. 